Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, I said, my name is Miles Gartland. Um, I work in the business school at uh, Rockers University, and I teach business intelligence and analytics. Um, and um, so what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today is, uh, is the Jupyter Project, um, data science, and particularly Python, and then also R. I think the, we, we've had, that we, uh, R was mentioned in the last talk. Um, just to give you a little bit about myself that might, might help inform this, so uh, I've been um, um, doing analytics and statistics for a long time, and so like most of us my age, I cut my teeth on SAS and SPSS. Those were our main tools. And then people over in my discipline, I am not a computer scientist, I'm much more statistically inclined, and so we were taught an R. Um, and then it's only really been recently where uh, Python has become really a viable tool for people that are doing um, um, a data mining. And really why, uh, at least in, in my opinion, is because Python, although Python is a great general purpose language, uh, Python's with the development of Pandas, uh, SkyKitLearn, and Stat models has really made uh, uh, Python a very viable language for people who do data mining and modeling and things like that. That said, when you if you if you ever go out into the uh, the data science blogs and you want to get into a real good debate, you bring up R versus a Python, and it's really a red state blue state type of, of argument. And we go on and on and on and on, and you just are firmly in a camp of one ver ver versus the other. And so I brought this from the last Katie Nuggets um, survey, and you could see again you have. Uh, um, you have about a uh, little more people with, uh, with doing R, a little less people with Python, uh, people doing in between. And probably what's happening is, as I've been watching this over the years, is R is shrinking just a little bit, not by much. And Python is shrinking, uh, I mean, increasing a little bit. And then the people who are in the middle uh, are increasing. And actually, what I'm here to talk about is the in the middle part, because uh, that's where I've actually found myself working. Um, so again, with Pandas and SkyKitLearn, I've really enjoyed those, uh, the, uh, those, uh, those packages, and I particularly love the IPython notebook, which you see here, which is now called um, Jupyter. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with what, what, the, what, what the, uh, the Jupyter project is doing, uh, they, they came out with IPython Notebook uh, a number of years ago. It's been a very popular interactive tool, particularly for people that do uh, d d data science interactive work. It's great to work in. It's also great uh, to display in. Who does any of their Python work in, in, in IPython a notebook. So I think most of you understand uh, of, the, of the benefits. Again, I'm not somebody who writes big programs. I'm doing analysis. So IPython notebook is wonderful. Um, uh, they've actually changed their name and now calling it the, uh, the Jupyter Project. And what they're trying to do is uh, they're going to keep up with Python. And actually, uh, uh, Py IPython Notebook 3 will be the last one that comes out under that name. Everything else is Jupyter, because they're also coming out with a standalone for R. They're coming out with a standalone for Haskell, a standalone for Jupyter, and I'm sorry, for, 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 for Julia, I'm sorry, for, for Julia, and, and so on. So now it'll be uh, the Jupyter Project. And if you actually update your IPython Notebook, uh, recently, you'll actually notice the icon at the very top moves from IPython Notebook to Jupyter. But again, has all, all of those uh, all of those benefits. Um, so, what though I got faced with it as I was as I've been moving and working with uh, with uh, with Python and enjoying IPython. A notebook is R still has a lot of advantages, and again, uh, as I said, you want to get into a, a good argument, and there, there's great uh, sm smackdown debates of R versus Python. Uh, uh, there's a, um, a blog on on datacamp.com, which actually goes through, through actually a very probably the best job I've ever seen of all the pros and cons of uh, R versus Python in in data science. It does a, a really nice job, and you can uh, grab this infographic. Uh, it, it does it, it ex extremely well. Um, but at the end of the day, um, the benefit to me is R just has much more mature libraries for a lot of things. Sky, I use SkyKitLearn, that's, uh, Pandas and SkyKitLearn are my, my, my two most used things in, in, uh, in, in Python. But, and I've even talked to the people at SkyKitLearn, that they have an interest in, in depth, not breadth where R has a lot of breadth in it. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, are being, that have been developed out in R that Python is 
either not going to go to or is going to be years to its development. So when it comes to the packages, our, our libraries are much, much more mature. So when I'm working on a project, if I could use Python, and particularly Sky Kitlar, and I like the way the language works, I use it, but invariably I always run into a problem where, gee, I wish I had something, I wish I could go over and, and, and do this stuff in R. Um, and so what, what Jupyter's been able to do is, is allow me to keep everything in my same environment through something called um, um, RPy2. Um, and, and work on it. So I just wanted to give you a little demonstration on how RPy2 works. Um, this will be very basically beginning, and then I'll really come in and show you an example of, of where I, I would actually use it. So um, if, if you want to use um, uh, um, RPy2, and what RPy2 is, it literally just is inter uh, 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 an interactivity between Python and R. To me, it's the best of, of both worlds. Um, is you need three things. You have the pip install of RPy2, uh, and then you have, you have an import, uh, and then you have to load this thing co uh, called, uh, with, a, with, a, with a percentage sign, lo load our magic. Um, and so I did that, and then from, from, the, uh, from the IPython note notebook, I'm able to come in here and load clusters and, and start to do all that things that I would be, I would be doing in R. So I just, just randomly picked uh, the, the cluster package. Again, how it works is I could create, so here is what, when I created just an array in Python uh, in line 51, and then in line 52, and basically all you need to do is once you've done this, is you start the line with a, uh, with a, um, uh, with, with a percentage sign and a capital R, and then that tells IPython or, or a Jupyter, send this over to R and do something and bring it back which is, it's a very nice thing, it's, 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 it's very simple. So here I basically just said, uh, take that array Z, send it over to R, and then in R calculate the mean and return it back. Um, and then, and then actually, I, I'm, uh, and then in the, the next line again, I just took and used the R thing of summary, and as you know, that just gives you the, the, uh, the min, max, median, and the, the first and second. I could then do the same thing, I could create an object in R and pass back to Python. So here again, I just create a simple little array inside of R. Again, you can always see when I'm working in R because it always starts with a percentage sign, capital R. Um, I just create a small, a small little array. And then, and then so, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot, I'm sorry. You always pass it, you pass it from Python to R as an import with a, uh, an I, and then you send it back out of R back to Python with an O. That's about the only other thing you, you have to remember. So here I'm now sending the object I made in R uh, back out to Python, I just called it X. And then here I'm able to just use, that now, now I'm back in Python and I'm able to use a matplotlib and just make a very simple little, uh, little diagram. I'm able to, to print it out. Now, so again, I just gave you just how a very simple interactiveness. Now you might look at this and say, why would I bother with any of this? Because I could obviously do the, the, both those examples in either of the languages without switching back and forth. That, that was not the purpose. The purpose is, is when you're working in SkyKitLearn or stat models or one of these and you find something that you would really like to do in R, how can you, can, how can you use that? So actually I'm going to show you where I stumbled onto this and it became a, a benefit. And I just kind of turned it into a to to toy example. Um, so I was doing a bunch of classification models, um, and so um, I read this. I, I read in my uh, my CSV with with pandas. Everything was great. Uh, I did all that. I, I did my standard preprocessing again, all in pandas. Did uh, some exploratory data analysis. So you see, this is a um, this is a um, um, uh, a two target. Um, classification model uh, with a very imbalanced d data set. My, my target is phone sales. Again, I'm doing everything in Python. I'm quite happy. Uh, doing the pre-processing. I build a, a decision tree with a decision tree cl a classifier. I do the, the random forest. Uh, do a little, uh, uh, again, I use uh, matplotlib for, uh, for the for confusion ma matrix. And I do a little, I do a little um, 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 cross-validation, everything is great. Then I want to do a neural net. Uh-oh. This is where I ran into the problem. Um, Python, in my, I had, at the time when I did this, I had not found a good package, and there is no good package in SkyKitLearn. Uh, deep learning is now starting to, to, to get into it. But 
there's a lot of very mature neural net packages in R that just are not yet in Python. Maybe someday, or maybe I haven't found them, or whatever the reason. But it just said to me is, gee, I really like the nice, easy neural net package that was in R. I really wish I, I had something that simple over, over in, in Python. Um, so that's essentially what, what, I, what I did. Um, and again, so I just took my, my data set I passed my test and train features over to R, and again, just uh, I, I just did a, a, a summary j j just to show you now. Uh, my my objects are now in R, and I'm able to to do the calculations in R. Um, and uh, just again, just th th I didn't have to do this just to show you. So whereas before I did a a box plot, I'm sorry, I did a a line graph and map, map plot lib. Here's actually a box plot that was done in R that then pushed back. So again, R has a lot of very nice graphics that you might like better uh, than some of the ones that are in matplotlib, and again, you could, you could still call those up and, 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 and use all of those, and again, it brings it back into, into your notebook. So I wanted to do a neural net. Uh, there's a lot of neural net packages out there, again, that are quite mature. There's uh, NNNet, there's neural net, neural net tools, uh, uh, E1071, uh, there, there's a, a bunch of them. I just picked neural net, a package, just for this example. And uh, so I was, actually, I was, I was able to do this just in three lines. So I built my, so, um, so I loaded the package, neural net, I built a, I built a model, it's a classification model in R using my R syntax. Then I came down here, and again, uh, what was what I like about this is the very simple type of, of notation. And I built my neural net. I put in my formula. I uh, I, I I chose to do a a two hidden layer. I'm sorry, uh, two nodes in my hidden layer. Instead of backprop, I use something called rprop plus. Uh, my, my, uh, my optimal threshold is 0.01. Uh, the purpose is I'm able to go in and tune and use all the tunings that R, R has, has for it, which is, is again, what, what I liked. Then, inside of this, I was able to print off um, this, and so you could, you could see it took 670, uh, 600, 6,118 steps in order to, uh, in order to come to a, uh, an optimization, came to an error of, of 198. And then again, I was able to uh, use the R visualization and bring that back into my IPython um, notebook so you could see how my variables go, see the different weightings, and, and so on. So again, this is not something that, again, I was able to find for neural nets. This talk is about not neural nets. It's just a talk about how I could interact and use the power of the packages in R if they are not yet implemented in Python, or maybe you just like the way they work better in R, and you could do these very seamlessly. Um, um, th 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 that's, th that's the purpose. Then I come in. Um, I actually built a little a data frame of, of the weightings, and here I sent the weight. So now, again, I'm still doing all my work in R. Uh, because that's where the, the neural net package is. I take, I take the weightings and I output them back into Python. And here I am uh, with, and, and so now I'm completely back into Python. I print results and it shows me here all, all of my weightings for that particular neural net. And then without missing a beat, and I just, again, I threw this back in. Then I'm back in, then I ran a, a support a vector machine right back in, uh, in, into SkyKitLearn. So the purpose, uh, uh, so, so, so again, um, I tend to really like the idea of, um, of um, I really don't like to get into the fights of Python ver uh, versus R. I really think that both communities do things ex ex extremely well, and I'm finding myself rather happy here, uh, r r right in the middle. Um, now, um, Python is certainly catching up, but there also might be, but there's also a, a learning curve to some of this as well. Um, I've really not seen much of an issue with speed. Um, uh, honestly, I was surprised by that. I thought this would become immensely slow. Um, actually, it was it was uh, when I'm passing it back and forth and running a neural net, running it past. Oddly enough, it was actually faster. I need to time it, but just just looking at it, it actually ran faster when I ran it 
from Python into R back into Python, then I ran it just in R. I don't understand why at all. I'll have to ask one of the computer science guys why that might be, but it, it, it just seemed, I, I need to time it. It, 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 it's, it, it seems to be. And then again, with the, with the Jupyter project, it's really nice because then I could take this entire thing and I built it just an HTML notebook of this and then I could send this on to anybody, anybody um, uh, that I want. So again, with, with tools like this, um, the, uh, the Jupyter project I think is wonderful. It makes for a wonderful IDE. Uh, SkyKitLearn is wonderful, but again, they, they've made it very clear that, that, that they're, they're focusing on a certain set of tools and there's a whole lot of, of, uh, of data science and data mining. They have zero plans to get into. And again, there's a lot of very mature packages in R. Why not use them? Why choose one or the other when we now have this ability to combine them and again, keep them in a very nice um, Jupyter package uh, with all of this? So I just use that as an example of how I, I stumbled into this. One I ran into this very recently was um, I had an imbalanced data set and I wanted to do a, a, a syn synthetic oversampling called the Smoot. Again, Python doesn't have a nice um, package for it. I'm not a great programmer. R has a wonderful package. It was very simple just to uh, take it over there, run the synthetic oversampling, push it back into R, push it back into SkyKit Learn, and keep on going. So I'm finding myself doing um, a, a, a lot of that. If uh, SkyKit Learn pa made the package, maybe I won't use the R. We will see. Uh, uh, again, there, there's trade-offs to it. So um, that was kind of my demonstration, um, and um, I, um, I will take um, any questions. We have a couple minutes left. Uh, yes, sir. Do you know when uh, an Artipi, are they actually copying the vectors, or are they just passing a pointer to the uh, location and memory? My guess is, now I need, I, I, I'm guessing here, okay? I'm a professor, I'm allowed to guess and make it sound authoritative. Um, my guess is it's a pointer because I don't have that much RAM on, the, on this on MacBook Air and it would have slowed down. If it was doing what you first suggested, my guess is I would have seen a real speed. So I'm guessing it's a pointer. That is my guess. That, that's a great question I'd like to, uh, to, to know too. Yes, sir. Objects can you pass back and forth? Any, that, any that I have seen. And actually, if you go to the... Uh, um, uh, uh, R2Pi is actually a very strong development site because it's, there's people like me out there and they're actually, there's actually a whole new set of packages on different types of uh, objects and how to do R pushes and R things like that to move them back and forth and that's actually an area the people who build that package are really working on. Right now I've been able to see that I've been able to push all, 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 all types of, of packages, oh sorry, all types of objects uh, back and forth. I've not yet found a limitation Somebody will always find one f f for me, though, uh, however. But I know that that is a big, a big area where they're trying to develop, so it's very seamless. Yes? Is it, uh, does R2Pi work outside of my Python notebook, or is it kind of an extension only for that? Um, it it, it, it works. So what, what I've seen is it, it, it works best. I mean, it works best in the, in the IPython notebook. It will work fr fr from the terminal. However, I, um, the, the, the results and the, the results don't, that come back are not near as, as nice, but if you just purely want to run it, you can do it. I've seen you be able to do it from the, from the terminal, from being able to do it from Eclipse or, or what, 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 whatever you're working on. But, it, but, it was specific, but it's been specifically built to work with IPython no, 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 notebook. I think that, that is the audience that the R2Pi has been developed for. By the way, it's all, it was formerly called uh, R Magic, if, if, if you're familiar. Good question. Yes, sir. The example that you were saying where it would run faster if you went Python to R back to Python than just R natively? Um, that neural net. So last night I was sitting in my hotel room and I said, you know what, let me just go and run this exact example just in native R. And it actually ran that night. It ran, it took twice the time to run it in native R than it did for me to pass it to R and pass it back to, uh, to Python. I need, I, I need to uh, w uh, figure out why. That, that, I expected it to be the, the other way around. Yep. Okay, let's, uh, I think we are out of time for more questions, but let's thank the speaker again. Thank you all. <laughs>